Okay, good morning. Good morning, students. I'm your instructor in ARU 302, Building Utilities, Electrical, Electronics, and Mechanical Systems. So, ngayon, uh, this video, I'm making this video because this is a sort of introduction to our course. And I will be discussing with you several topics under this. And at the same time, I'm going to discuss with you very short and briefly the course outcomes and the module outcomes of this course for this semester. So I hope that you'll stay with me. You'll not get uh, sleepy because of the weather that we have right now. And you'll stay with me while I'm trying to discuss everything that I have included here in this presentation. So, tandaan nyo class, no? pinagpuyatan ko to, pinaghirapan ko to. Tsaka, nag-prepare talaga ako para kahit pa paano, may, ma maintindihan ninyo yung mga bagay-bagay na, na dapat nyo malaman dito sa subject na to. Although, hindi talaga to yung specialization natin because these are being taught formerly by mechanical, professional mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, but at this, but right now, it was a task given to me and I'm willing to uh, and I'm to totally embracing this because uh, it is also a learning process for me and for both of us while we are going to spend this semester in learning ARU 302. So please don't get asleep or don't get sleepy and stay with me for the rest of the slides that I'm going to discuss with you. So good morning again. Now, here are the course, course, course outcomes. No? Course outcomes. Just allow me for now to read this to you because later on in the latter part of this video, I am going to emphasize all of these outcomes one by one because this it has something to do about the importance of this course to the practice of architecture. For now, just allow me to read this. So first is to realize the importance of electrical and mechanical systems as an essential utility system element in any building or structure with the ultimate aim of providing for human comfort and satisfaction. To acquire fundamental knowledge of the systems involved in relation to the activities occurring within the, con within the confines of a building in terms of either environment control with the power provided by the electricity generating devices and appurtenances. To know the basic principles of these elements in terms of function, application, operation, and maintenance, and to converse effectively with allied professionals, the common engineering language associated with the electrical and mechanical systems. So this is the course outcomes, or this is what we want to happen to you after uh, this semester. Semester, I mean. So this is the objective of this module. To demonstrate knowledge about the electrical, electronics, and mechanical systems and its relevance to architecture. And to exhibit familiarity about the scope of practice of electrical, electronics, and mechanical engineers. And to identify the importance of these systems to a building or structure. Kinaya ko yun, no? Now, the content of this module is one, number one, the electrical, electronics, and mechanical systems. The scope of practice of electrical, electronics, and mechanical professionals, and the background and relevance of this, of their practice, uh, uh, to the practice of architecture. So here we go. Topic number one. This is a sort of, uh, this is just a brief introduction or brief discussion about electrical, electronics, and mechanical systems. Medyo short lang eh, because later on in the latter and the next part of our uh, for the next coming modules, do natin talaga i-discuss ng uh, mas mabusi si yung mga details, tsaka yung mga bagay under sa iba't ibang systems like mechanical electronics and mechanical system. But for now, a just sort of introduction or brief uh, description of, of these three systems that are included in this course. So when you talk about electrical system, it is an electrical, syst electrical system within a context of a building is a network of conductors and equipment designed to carry, distribute, and convert electrical power safely from the point of delivery so yung delivery of the power going to a building 
or from a, from the generation point to a various to the various loads around the building that consumes the electrical energy. So yun do yung sinasabi ating electrical system from the from the distribution, syempre papasok doon yung sa summary service entrance and when talk about electrical system in the building, so yun na yung how it was designed by the designer, electrical uh, professional electrical engineer and how it will function in a, in a way that it will respond to the needs of the end users or the users of the or the people who will be using that building. Also, when you talk about electrical system from the Republic Act 7920, the new electrical engineering law, according to that law, when you talk about electrical system or electrical system design, it refers to the choice of electrical systems, including planning and detailing of requirements for protection, control, monitoring, coordination, interlocking of electrical system among systems among among others. So, yun daw yung electrical system based on RA 7920. So, it includes planning. Of course, plan has to be created. It has to be uh, furnished. It has to be uh, on hand wherein it includes all the details of the possible equipments that are going to be used in a building. The possible design of each... Uh, electrical systems, the elect the power layout, the lighting layout, at the same time, other system which uh, and part of this system or part of this plan or part of this system includes the the control, the safety protection, the protections, the control, and many other things under this system. So, just an overview. So, ito yung nangyayari, no? Ito yung overview kung paano dumadating yung electricity sa atin sa atin no? sa bahay natin sa offices natin it comes from the generation point of generation wherein like for example yung mga diesel ko diesel fired power plant coal fired power plant so these are or nuclear power plant hydro power plant or mga solar uh, solar farms these are these where the generation of electricity are being done so dun yung production dun ginagawa or nagpo-produce then after, so pagkatapos nun yung yung tinatawag na dun yung next is yung transmission so kung may makita kayo mga transmission towers mga malaking towers no uh, nanggagaling yun of course sa sa generation or sa production ng electricity then it is being distributed uh, di, being transmitted through transmit transmission towers and transmission lines then dinadala dun sa mga distributors so may mga yung mga distributors like for example more peco eleco uh, may mga sarili silang substations and in their substations dun nakaka-connect yung mga transmission lines and they are the one tasked to distribute the electricity going to the households to the offices to the buildings and iban pa so o iba pang mga establishments. So, just a sort overview. So, pagdating naman sa bahay natin, syempre, may mga electrical service. Yun yun tinatawag dito. Makikita mo itong service, electrical service o yung service entrance. So, tingnan nyo yung bahay ninyo kung may mga ganito. Kung wala, ewan ko lang kung bakit nagkaganon. Pero, pero syempre, part talaga to ng electrical system because coming from the distribution line, of your distribution company dito dito kuno connect yung ano yung linya so sa service entrance papunta dun sa may electric meter para malaman mo kung mga ano ka ano yung ano kalaki or gaano kalaki yung kinoconsume ng electricity per month then may main panel ka dito tawag or in it is it serves as uh, the main uh, control point para sa isang bahay na kung for example aalis ka, walang tao, pwede dun mo na lang patayin para sigurado lahat off. Pero at the same time, uh, yun, may mga switches, may mga receptacles, at saka may mga examples na mga equipments na ginagamit mo para sa loob ng bahay, sa loob ng bahay na kung saan uh, ginagamit ng electricity. So, in a building, in a, in a small building, so ganun pa rin. Yun nga lang, ang pagkakaiba, instead instead na uh, dederecho siya sa uh, main panel mo or sa electric meter, may mga 
galing sa distribution, dadaan pa siya muna syempre sa may transformer because it had uh, the load coming from the distribution company has to be converted in a way that it is suitable to the uh, loads of a building. Yun, yun. Parang ganun. Sana tama yung sinasabi ko. Anyway, pagkatapos nun, syempre, didiretso na siya sa may meter and at the same time, doon na siya sa may uh, control panel mo and it will now be distributed to different branch circuits in your building. No? So, ito naman. For example, uh, pagdating naman sa mga malalaking buildings, so from the service entrance, may mga, may, may mga main distribution board sila. Pagkatapos, uh, naka-divide. May mga ganong buildings talaga. May malalaking main distribution board. Naka-divide naka into three uh, sub-distribution boards. And each distribution board has different functions. Like for example, in this one, ang function ng isa is para sa XHVAC. So yun lang talaga yung focus niya, HVAC. Pero somehow, nakakonect din sa, sa kanya yung ibang mga maliliit ng mga equipments. May equipments sa mga appliances like lighting, plugs, lighting, uh, computer, air conditioner, mga TV, something like that. no It's the, in the first distribution board. Now, in the second distribution board, ang nakakonect sa kanya yung malaking machine. So, maybe uh, malaking machine. Like, for example, it has something to do about... Uh, so, may machine siya nakakonect. Siguro, in a building like this, yung mga elevators, mga escalators. So, nakafocus lang yung distribution board na to para sa ganong mga machine so that uh, it will not uh, hamper the other equipments or other parts or electrical systems in the building. And may isa pang uh, distribution board or yung motor control center, it focuses sa mga pumps na naka uh, embed sa building o yung mga pumps na ginagamit sa building. So, yun. Pag mga malalaking building, mga complicated na mga building, so ganito, yung somehow yung itsura, yung, yung system na ginagamit nila. Pero, sige. No? Ang hirap palang maging electrical engineer, no? Mabuti na lang, nag-architect ako. Pero, uh, uh, if, to be honest, no, if I am not an architect, I might be an electrical engineer kasi yun yung sana yung gusto kong course next Pero kinuha na ng kapatid ko, so sa kanya na lang yun. Tsaka mahirap, mahirap talaga ang electrical engineering. Yun! Napagod. Napagod. Ah, hinihingal yata ako dun ah. Okay, next. Dito naman tayo sa electronic system. Kaya ko pa. Sana huwag kayong munang matulog class, no? Nagising-ising mo, nagising-ising. Now, this description or definition of electronics or electrical system, kinuha ko dun sa law na ginagamit nila o yung Electronics Engineering Law of 2004. Now, electronics is defined under this law as the science dealing with the development and application of devices and systems involving the flow of electrons and other or other carriers of electrical charge in a vacuum in gaseous media in plasma in semiconductors in solid state or and or in semel, similar similar devices including but not limited to applications involving optical electromagnetic and other energy forms when transduced or converted into electronic signal so nagets ninyo paki explain nga so yun daw yung electronics no yun yung sinasabi based on their law now uh, there are dif in a building, uh, there are different systems that will fall under the, ele the electronics uh, systems, no? Or it will electronics engineer, no? They are de they are designing these systems in a in a building. Like for example, number one, we have the fire detection and alarm system. It's very important. It's now a requirement. In our in, by the building official that each building should have FDAS or yung tawag don or yung shortcut don is the fire detection and alarm system. So ano nangyari don? Pag may sunog, no, yung smoke detectors mo, madedetermine niya, ma malalaman niya na may sunog, and it will uh, give information, no, uh, it will it will provide signals and create alarms and somehow connectado din siya sa sa fire protection na na 
na nasa mechanical systems naman so that as early as possible mapapatay kagad yung sunog or ma uh, madedetect kagad yung sunog tsaka automatically mapapatay kagad yung sunog for the safety of everyone so fire detection systems are designed to discover fires early in their development when time will still be available for the safe evacuation of occupants so early detection also plays a significant role in protecting the safety of the emergency response personnel property loss can be reduced and downtime for the operation minimized to early detection because control efforts are started while the fire is still small so yun nga no that's why very important yung system na to and this system falls under uh, the electronics engineering so most alarm systems provide information to emergency responders on location and fire speeding the process of fire control in our city right now even in the residential areas fire of uh, smoke smoke detectors or uh, some some sort of fire detection and alarm system are already being required although it will uh, it will add additional expense to the owner but if we are going to look at it uh, mas maganda rin yung ganun. at least we cannot uh, because we do not know when fire will happen when when these situations will come but but at least we are ready and we have the system to somehow give us an early detection of fire so muna ito yung example no yung uh, 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 push ay uh, yung, uh, yung smoke detector ito ito naman yung uh, alarm system so open mo to push mo para may ano at the same time it will give signal information na merong sunog also part ng electronics engineering ay yung dinidesign ng mga electronics engineer in a building is ito yung CCTV or closed circuit television system so siguro i i know that all of us are already familiar with this with this or yung CCTV is a system that allows you to keep an eye on what's going on in and around your business so kung may mga negosyo ka wala ka dun sa business mo wala ka dun sa office nyo at the same, but, but you can still supervise and you can still see what's going on if you have these systems so cameras and monitors enable you to view events live or recorded archive footage for later reference so yun, yun nga no pag may mga accident sa kalsada pag may mga nagnanakaw dun sa isang bahay Sa, may mga situations that nahuhuli yung mga uh, yung mga ganong mga tao no because of the CCTV uh, don't make mistakes it is wonderful for an ordinary television so yun nga yun na yun no okay now let's proceed mechanical system ala sana pani na record ko no baka wala baka hindi ko na record kinakabahan ako sige let's do kung hindi ko na record ulitin ko na lang wala namang problema so mechanical system includes plumbing elevator so yun don't uh, na nakita nyo no siguro nadaanan niyo rin dati na meron kayong plumbing uh, na na ano na course under utility uh, utility rin na course pero in some areas in some countries no yung plumbing nila mismo naka-include sa mechanical system but here in our country in the Philippines uh, naka-separate talaga yung plumbing dun sa uh, sa mga master plumbers especially if we are referring to the plumbing or to the system within the building no yung mga master plumbers ang ang in charge dun pero outside the building like yung mga drainage like yung mga uh, STP or sewage sewage treatment plan syempre naka sa ano na yun nasa sanitary engineer na yun pero may mga iba na mga practices abroad that they include plumbing under the mechanical system now let's proceed when you talk about mechanical systems we have ay, uh, elevators are included there mga mechanical engineers they are also designing specifying the best elevators for specific use escalators heating and and, and air conditioning sy systems so you know it's under mechanical system 
So the early introduction of mechanization in the buildings in the early 20th century brought about major adjustments and the new equipment demanded floor space and the design team. So, tandaan nyo, architecture students, that these mechanizations of the buildings in the early 20th century may mga nag it cost some adjustments in terms of the floor space requirements. And later on, we will discuss that. No? So, also began to introduce electrical and HVAC heating, ventilating, and air conditioning uh, engineers heating and cooling change dramatically. So, uh, yun, may heating. Kung nasa malamig ka na area, malamig ka na lugar, kailangan mo ng heater. So, yun, kung kailangan naman ng proper ventilation and, pro and uh, thermal comfort by providing uh, a good temperature within a space so yun yung air conditioning and they are being designed by mechanical engineers and they fall under mechanical system so modern buildings with their large heat gains turn central heating into a little more than a supplement heat removal is much more serious burden especially in warmer weather the roofs on high rise are occupied by cooling towers and mechanical penthouses Entire floors are often dedicated to containment of blowers, compressors, water chillers, boilers, pumps, and generators. That's why if you happen to visit a building na may mga roof deck, and if it happens to be a mall, so makikita mo doon, no? nandudun yung mga cooling towers sila, mga mechanical penthouses nila, yung mga, uh, yung mga blowers, compressors, yung mga pumps nandudun because uh, it is... Uh, doon nila nilagay para at least it will not occupy some areas in the building. Doon na lang mas, com tsaka mas uh, convenient if in case kina kailangan ng mga, mga maintenance. Yun. So some other systems under mechanical uh, system, ng mga HVAC, yung mga yun, water supply, drainage sanitary, disposal gas supply, yun yung sabi ko kanina, no? Plumbing, water distribution, so... Sometimes, again, in other areas, in other countries, plumbing falls under mechanical. Pero in our country, it is the in charge there to design is the master plumber. And also, at the same time, very important, yung sinasabi ko nina while I was discussing, uh, while I am discussing the electronic system, is the fire protection. So, yung smoke detector, it will, they will detect the alarm, uh, they, they will detect that there is a fire, no, it will give an alarm then at the same time, yung fire protection natin, that's why may mga nakikita ka sa mga buildings na mga sprinkler heads, because once na naramdaman mo na may mainit or ano, it will automatically uh, dispense water no? so yun, sige let's discuss lang natin brief, uh, more detailed yung mga ganong bagay so fire protection water supply, stand pipe, fire and smoke detection annunciation and other special systems under mechanical system. So, yun na nga, no? Yun na. Yun na yung mga brief description or discussion about these three systems that fall under ARU 302. So, sana may naintindihan kayo kahit paano. Kung di nyo yung intindihan, uh, papano yun? Ewan ko na lang. Anong gagawin natin? So, yun. Uh, Balik-balikan nyo na lang yung video or maghanap para pa kayo ng ibang mga sources of information para mas clear. Next is again, very short description about the scope of practice of these three different professions, electrical, electronics and mechanical uh, engineers, no. Mabilis lang, mabilis lang, mabilis lang. So pag under the practice, the practice of profession in electrical engineering, may tatlo. Uh, may mga tatlong Tatlo sila. Ano sino sila? May mga professional electrical engineer, may mga registered electrical engineer, tsaka meron ding registered master electrician. Sino-sino yung mga yun? Ano yung mga ginagawa nila? So, when you talk about a professional electrical engineer, it includes the sole authority to seal electrical plants. So, sila lang yung may karapatan na mag-seal, mag-certify ng mga electrical plants. 
and to practice an electrical engineering in its full scope as defined in this act. So, under RA 7920 or in a new electrical engineering law, nakaspecify doon kung ano talaga yung scope of practice ng isang electrical engineer. So, an electrical engineer based on the RA 7920 can practice uh, electrical engineering in its full scope uh, as, it, as it was defined in the act in, in RA 7920 but they cannot sign and seal or certify any electrical plans but an, a professional electrical engineer can practice what the, the electrical engineer can practice but they are also but they are allowed or they are the one who has the sole authority to certify electrical plans so when you talk about certifying the electrical plans they are the one who is responsible uh, sa, sa design they are the one responsible if any if in case no may mga flaws or may mga may mga uh, doon sa plano they are the one who is liable no uh, so may mga liabilities that's why uh, that's why yun yun nga yun so it's the work of the professional electrical engineer so when you are a registered electrical engineer uh, based on the law, syempre, yun, yun, yun yung mga pwede mong i-practice. So, you, are, you can supervise the operation and maintenance of an electrical equipment in a power plant, industrial plants, watercraft, electronics, locomotive, and other manufacture and repair of electrical supply and utilization of equipments including switchboards, power transformers, generators, motors, apparatus, and other teaching or electrical subjects and sale and distribution of electrical equipments and systems requiring engineering circulations or application of engineering data. Gets nyo? No, ang haba no, no? So, pero, yun nga yung pwedeng gawin ng electrical engineer. Uh, yung nakita natin dito, supervision, operation, maintenance. Babasahin ko ulit. Babasahin ko ulit. So, yun nga. So, ito pwede talagang i-practice ng electrical engineer. But they, they can... It, I think they can design, no? But they cannot certify their design. It's only the professional electrical engineer can certify. And they are the one to be held liable for their design. For the design because they have certified it with their seal and their signature. Now, when you talk about registered master electricians, uh, they, it includes the installation, wiring, operation, maintenance, and repair of electrical machinery, equipment, and devices in residential, commercial, institutional, commercial, and industrial buildings in power plants, substations, watercrafts, electric locomotives, and the like, provided that if the installation or the machinery is rated in excess of 500 kilovolt ampere or in excess of 600 volts, the work shall be under the supervision of a professional electrical engineer or registered electrical engineer. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, that if the insulation damage is rated in excess, so kung may mga limitations sila, no? if in case that uh, it has uh, nang tawag dun, so may limitations sila. Again, let me read. If the insulation or the machinery is rated in excess of 500 kilovolt, no? or in excess of 600 volts, so, dapat, ang gagawa na nun, o yung mag-take charge sa mga ganong uh, kalaking mga voltahe, should now be the electrical engineer, registered electrical engineer, or the professional, uh, professional electrical engineer. Okay? Now, the electronics engineer. No, may mga electronics engineer. Gaya ng electrical engineer, may professional electronics engineer, may electronics engineer, may yung registered master electrician, may counterpart siya sa electronics engineering which is the electronics technician. <clears throat> so ano yung pagkakaiba nun? It consists of any work or activity relating to the application of engineering sciences. So yung electronics engineer, they include their scope of practice includes investigation, analysis, Synthesis, planning, design, specification, research and development, provision, procurement, marketing, sales, 
Manufacture and production, construction and installation, test, measurements, control, operation, repair, revising, as in revising, servicing, technical support and maintenance of electronic components, devices, products, apparatus, instruments, equipment, systems, networks, operations, and processes in the field of electronics, including the communications and telecommunications information and communication technology or ICT based on RA 9292 which is the Electronics Engineering Act of 2004 so yun daw yung ginagawa ng Electronics Engineer now tingnan natin kung ano ginagawa ng P PECE no Professional Electronics Engineer ah okay it consists of all of the above plus the sole authority to provide consulting services as defined in this act and to sign and seal electronics plan drawings permit applications specifications reports and other technical documents prepared by the himself or herself or under the direct his direct supervision so yung ginagawa ng, prof, ng electrical and uh, i mean electronics engineer no pwedeng gawin ng professional electronics engineer pero like electron electrical engineer they are the one was the authority to uh, to sign seal electronics plans and drawings permit applications specifications no or yung mga ganung bagay pero he has or she has direct supervision so if in case he's not the one preparing the plans if he's not the one doing the specifications but it should be under his or her direct supervision. So, parang ganun din sa may electrical engineer or professional electrical engineer. So, ganun din yung sa may professional electronics engineer. They can practice the, what the electronics engineer can practice. But, he, again, he is or she is liable because he is the one. He's, it is his name. It is his seal. It is the signature uh, of the electric uh, professional electronics engineer ang naka nakalagay dun sa mga plan so siyang liable kung ano man ang mangyari kung may mga may mga ibang mga bagay kung may mga questions something like that so sa kanya nakala sa kanya naka ano naka kumbaga he is the one responsible for his uh, plans and designs no? So, electronics technician consists of non engineering work or activity relating to the installation construction operation control tests, measurements, diagnosis, repair, and maintenance, manufacture, and production, sales, and marketing of electronic components, devices, products, apparatus, instruments, equipment, systems, networks, operations, and processes located on land, watercraft, aircraft, and etc. Etc. na lang kasi ang haba. So, that's electronic electronics technician. Now, dito na lang. Next, let's proceed to the practice of profession of a mechanical engineer. So, dalawa lang yung include ko kasi may bampa, may iba pa eh. Like for example, may mga may tinatawag pang uh, plant mechanic, no? So hindi naman kailangan, hindi naman kasama 'yon. So dito na lang muna yung dalawa, mechanical engineer and professional mechanical engineer. We'll try to differentiate the two. So, when you are a professional mechanical engineer, you are the one responsible or in charge of preparation of plans, designs, investigations, valuation, technical reports, specifications, project studies or estimates, or to be in the performance of other professions, mechanical engineering activities. So, yun. Yun yung ginagawa ng mechanical professional. Pero parang gagaya rin yun ng electrical, professional electrical engineer, professional electronics engineer, kung anong ginagawa ng mechanical engineer. Pwede rin gawin, pero mamaya makikita natin kung anong ginagawa ng mechanical engineer. Pero, so, yun. Ito na. To be responsible, charge of construction, erection, insulation, alteration, or the for the performance of mechanical engineering service in connection with the manufacture, sale, supply, or distribution of any mechanical works, project, or plan either for himself or for others unless a duly registered mechanical engineer or professional mechanical engineer so ito yung pwedeng gawin ng mechanical engineer no at professional mechanical engineer so kung anong pwedeng gawin ng mechanical engineer pwedeng gawin ng professional mechanical engineer pero kagaya rin ng electrical uh, professional electrical engineer <coughs> 
Excuse me. Pero yung kagaya ng professional electrical engineer or professional electronics engineer, it is the professional mechanical engineer is the one liable or responsible because he's the one that can only certify, sign, or seal the plans. The mechanical engineer can design, but it should be under the supervision or direct supervision of a professional mechanical engineer. Pero para siyempre, because he has to make sure na tama yung design, tama yung aspects, tama yung estimates, because siya pa rin yung, yung mananagot doon dahil sa kanyang plangalan, sa kanyang plano, sa kanyang PRC license, yung, yung ano, yung liability or responsibility. So, ganun yun. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, ito na talaga. Ito na talaga. Ito na nga. Ito na nga. So, after all those things na binasa ko, binasa ko ba? Uh, diniscuss natin. Ito talaga yung highlight ng ano, ng video na to. Ano ba talaga yung relevance ng ARU 302 or Introduction to Electrical Electronics and Mechanical Systems sa practice ng architecture? <clears throat> Siyempre, architect tayo, architecture, design, conceptualization, structural conceptualization, at saka marami pa. Pagkatapos, marami na nga tayong ginagawa. Nagpupuyat na nga tayo para lang sa sa plano, sa concept pa lang, pinagpupuyatan na natin. Ibang, maraming, bag, maraming situation nga na nagawa na natin yung floor plan. Pero may scheme 1 pa, scheme 2, scheme 3, scheme 4, scheme 5. Naubos na nga yung oras natin. Di na nga tayo makatulog. Mga, tag, eh, mga limang kape na nga naubos natin. Pagkatapos, pag-aaralan pa natin to Electrical, electronics, tsaka mechanical systems. Hindi, pwede, hindi ba pwede na na sa kanila na lang to sila na lang bahala dito so bakit kasi naka-include yung ganitong subject or ganitong course sa sa atin sa in our study of architecture in architecture school so hindi ba kayo nagtataka eto eto na nga <laughs> eto na nga kanina ko pa sinasabi sasagutin na nga natin yun why ARU why do we have to study ARU 308 and why we have to be familiar with the electronic systems, electrical systems, mechanical systems na naka may mga professions na nga sa na nga diba na, na in charge doon. So bakit ba kasi kailangan natin talaga ma, maging, familiar, maging familiar doon? Ito na nga. Ito na nga kasi na ko pa sinasabi ito na nga. No, ito na talaga. Let just me read to you a brief definition of architecture based on RA 9266. Architecture is the art science or profession of planning, designing, constructing buildings in their totality, taking into account their environment in accordance with the principles of utility, strength, and beauty. If you are go, if you are familiar with Marcus Vitruvius Polio, uh, sa kanya nanggaling tong principles of utility, strength, and beauty in architecture. And it's so amazing that in the law, RA 9266, it was uh, used as uh, it was used, it is being used to define the, the profession of architecture in the RA, in RA 9266 or the Architecture Act of 2000, ano nga, 2003. <laughs> Tama ba? Okay. Now, for example, in this building, so this uh, Louis, Louis Vuitton building in Singapore. So, ang ganda, no? Siyempre, design ng architect. Pero hindi lang architect yung nagpuyat dito hindi lang architect yung nagpakahirap dito no pero of course the concept the planning uh, it has the architect has to see to it that it will respond to the need of the users it will meet the expectations of the client pero hindi lang isang tao yung nagpakahirap nagpuyat nagsunog ng kilay para mapaganda ng ganito yung building na to sino ba yung mga kasama doon discuss natin mamaya etong building na to na sa sa Singapore din no ganda syempre din isa ng architect pero hindi ibig sabihin na siya lang talaga yung naghirap although talagang mahirap i-design mahirap mag-design mahirap mag-conceptualize challenging mag-meet ng mga requirements because it is a very complicated structure or building but Aside from architects, may mga ibang tao that is a part of part of the team 
So to make this beautiful edifice to be completed in a way that it will it will meet the needs of its users. So ito naman uh, yung interlaced in Singapore, a very good design, a very good uh, very good expression of what architecture is. So ang ganda ng concept, ang ganda ng plan, ang ganda ng design, but of course just to tell you that it will still it is still a team effort kung bakit naging successful yung design at saka naging successful yung completion ng building na to now nakikita nyo sa picture no this analogy an analogy of what architecture or what a building is no so yung mga building na yon na tinitingnan natin Louis Vuitton Marina Bay Sands Hotel Convention Center and the interlaced uh, in Singapore so they are being likened to a human body a building and I, in this example a building is being likened to a human body so I hope nasusundan ninyo yung sinasabi ko no? Ang, when you say human body syempre may iba't ibang system yung circulatory system syempre from the heart no yung heart mo na laging laging ewan ko ba kung anong kamustang heart mo ngayon syempre it pumps blood it distribute the blood sa iba't ibang part ng katawan natin to our brain to our other parts no so the blood is being pumped by the heart so it falls under the circulatory system of our body now when you talk about nervous systems, mga signals, mga impulses from the other parts of the body na dinadala sa brain mo para ma-recognize kung ano yun, yung mga pains na nararamdaman mo sa kamay mo, sa ibang part ng body mo, yung signals dinadala papunta sa brain mo para ma-recognize mo there's something uh, wrong or there's a pain that maybe that you have to be uh, uh, it gives you information or alarm so that you'll, you'll know kung ano kung ano situation ng body mo Yung respiratory system, syempre, humihinga ka. Lahat ng tao, humihinga. Do, diba? So, yung... And all the same time, digestive system, kaling sa bibig mo, yung kinain mo, pupunta sa isaw pagus, yung stomach, large, small intestine, pagkatapos, dun, alam mo na kung saan lalabas yun. So, digestive system, yun na yun. And of course, skeletal system. So, ito yung mga systems na sa katawan natin, and ito yung ginagam and of course yung facade yung itsura yung proper placement ng mata yung proper shape ng kilay proper shape ng ano ng bibig mo yung baba mo mahaba or hindi yung tenga yung color syempre uh, it's your it's your ano ko bagay yung makikita na portion sa body mo pero tandaan natin no, hindi ibig sabihin na hindi nakikita hindi na importante so yung circulatory nervous respiratory system digestive system skeletal system they, these are very essential very very important parts or system sa body natin now y again build a building here is being likened to a human body we're in when you talk about circular circulatory circulatory system it is kumbaga, it, it is likened to the electrical uh, systems in our body syempre no uh, yun, from the heart pinapump yung blood papunta sa iba para at least uh, we can we function the body can function very well like the CCTV system or CCTV system, yung electronic system, di ba sinasabi natin kanina, yung mga signals, no, sa electronic system, may mga, for example, smoke alarm, pag na-detect na may smoke, pag na-detect na may apoy, so it will bring signal, it will bring information. So, in terms of the CCTV, makikita yung mga uh, movement ng mga tao sa loob, naka-record, naka in a server or in 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 a uh, in a storage no so nakikita like for parang ganun ng function ng nervous system natin no na, papunta sa brain something like that respiratory parang mechanical engineering parang nasa system ng mechanical engineering no yung mechanical engineering system so syempre like for example air conditioning no? so kailangan 
he, uh, heaters, ventilators, may mga ibang ibang buildings may mga dehumidifier pa to control the humidity within the building. So ganun pa yung mga ginagawa nila. No? So it's it is likened to the mechanical system in a building. No? Or I mean the mechanical system in a building is likened to the respiratory system of a human body. Yung digestive system, so yun, sanitary engineer, for example, uh, nagbumog ka, no? E, Siyempre, pagkatapos, hindi mo ililunin yun. Siyempre, sa laboratory, laboratory yung labas nun, o yung bagsak nun. Papunta sa laboratory, papunta dun sa saan? Down, sa drainage, no? Papunta dun sa, saan pupunta yun? No? Sa, sa mga pipes, papunta sa may catch basin, o papunta sa saan pa? Kung saan, no? And of course, skeletal system. That's why very important din yung function ng structural or civil engineer because your the, the weight of your body and all this system nagre-rest, nakarelay sa strength ng skeletal system mo. And it is like, it is the same thing in a building. Lahat ng load coming from the roof, sla, uh, uh, mga dead loads, live loads, the load of... of yun, mga equipments mo doon kinikerry ng, struc ng uh, structural system ng building. And the same thing with our skeletal system, it carries the weight of our body. So, meaning for a for building to be completed in a way that it is, it, it is functional, it responds to the need of the users, and it meets the expectations of the client, kailangan talaga team effort no pero of course architect architecture is the prime profession in construction or in a building pero it cannot be done by just architect alone it is a team effort by electrical electronics mechanical sanitary engineer or master plumber and a structural engineer and iba at saka iba pang mga mga team part ng team for a building to be completed for an edifice to be constructed and to, in a way that it meets the needs of the end users. So, yun nga, o, ulit, bakit nga kasi natin talaga kailangan pag-aralan yung ARU? Balikan natin yung course outcomes natin. Ito talaga yung goal why we are studying this course. One is to realize the importance of electrical and mechanical systems as essential utility system element in any building or structure with the ultimate aim of providing for human comfort and satisfaction. So, yun nga. No? Yun nga talaga. So, at least, maintindihan natin how is it important. How it will help you as an architect, as a designer, to, to meet or to, to achieve your aim of providing human comfort and satisfaction in your design of a building. Also, to acquire fundamental knowledge and systems involved in relation to the activities occurring within the con confines of a building in terms of indoor environment control with the power provided by electricity generating devices and appurtenances. Tandaan natin that these systems needs uh, they they need space in our plan in our design in our building so kung alam natin yung mga systems na to alam natin kung ano mga kailangan nila alam natin we, we can we can we can somehow uh anong tawag doon we can somehow we can see to it that we have included it in our planning in our space in the design of our space in our space planning we have included it in the uh, in our space planning so so that na provide natin siya ng proper design in terms of the movement especially yung mga taong talagang gagamit ng mga systems na yon no so at least in our plan we have included it we have considered it it is been part of our space planning we have allocated spaces rooms and other things uh, so that we can ma-accommodate ma ma natin yung mga systems na yun. No? For example, magdi-design ka ng elevator, nakalimutan mong maglagay ng ano, ng, ng room sa bab, sa, sa, ta sa itaas ng elevator. No? Yung mga ganun eh. Nag-design ka ng elevator, nakalimutan mo pala na may, ano, na may space pa dapat para lagyan ng ano, anong tawag doon? Machine room. Machine room. 
So, wala nang space paano mo, paano mo magagawa ng paraan yun. So, may mga ganun mga situations. Uh, if you are doing a multi-story building, syempre dapat may mga, may mga tawag ka doon, uh, may mga electrical room. No? So, pag, naka, pag di mo na-include yun, nakalimutan mo, hindi mo, you are not familiar with the system. So, yun. Uh, may magkakaproblema ka during the construction or mismo. Siyempre, during the construction, dito, doon mo pa hanapan ng lugar yon Kasi doon, mo, doon pa lang marirealize na ay eh, kailangan pala yung space na yon So, magkakaproblema ka doon. So, for example, yung yun, yung mga machine, mga machine room, mga electrical room, mga rooms na kung saan para mas mabilis na ma-troubleshoot yung mga problems in terms of the electronics, in terms of the electrical, in terms of the mechanical. So, kinukonsider na kasi yun natin uh, during the planning stage pa lang. So, if you are an architect, if you are a designer, or an, of course, an architect, dapat alam mo yun para at least na-consider mo na. Because if it is an art afterthought, magkakaroon ka talaga ng problema. So, masakit sa ulo. And, and that's why it's very important that we are familiar with these systems and how these systems work. Uh, yun. Pagkatapos, to know the basic principle of these systems in terms of function, application, operation, and maintenance. Yun nga yung sinasabi ko. No? Yun nga. So, if you know the function, if you know how it is being applied in a structure or in a building, you, if you know how it is being operated, in a, if you know how it is being maintained, alam mo kung paano mo i-prepare ang plan, i-prepare ang space, i-prepare ang, uh, ang ang movement, in your space planning so that it can accommodate to all the systems it will not hamper the movement of the ordinary people in the inside the building and at the same time so that you can converse effectively with allied professionals the common engineering language associated with the electrical and mechanical systems so kasi nangyayari talaga yon na tayo talaga architect with the allied professionals electrical mechanical structural Uh, sanitary engineer, nagbimiting kayo eh. So, kung hindi mo alam yung mga language na ginagamit in terms of uh, in terms of these various professions, so, mahihirapan ka. Pag hindi mo alam yung FDAS, to be honest, nung una, nung bago pa lang ako, bago pa lang akong architect, sinabi, may FDAS, may FDAS ba to? Hindi ko alam anong ibig sabihin ng FDAS. Matatwas nine years ago na 8 years ago. Hindi ko alam kung anong ibig sabihin ng FDAS, no? Medyo research ko na lang para malaman ko, eh, yun pala yung fire detection and alarm system. So, oo, oo ka na lang, oo, kunwari alam mo, pero hindi mo talaga alam kasi bago lang sa'yo yung word na narinig mo. So, uh, ganun, no? Very important talaga yun. That's why, uh, that's why dapat familiar kita sa mga, ano, sa mga, mga systems nila at saka yun. Uh, yung power of pump, no? mga sa mechanical systems, saan mo ilalagay yung jockey pump? Saan mo ilalagay yung, yung mga pumps nila? Ay, may mga ganun pala yun. Oo, may mga ganun. So, dapat alam mo yun. So, yun. Uh, hindi, hindi pwede na after thought, after thought lang yung mga ganun, yung mga ganun mga, mga equip, yung mga ganun mga bagay because we will, you will come, you will uh, encounter problems if in case, no? So, sa nilalagay yung water tank, sa nilalagay, sa nilalagay yung mga uh, equipment room, mga electrical room. Siyempre, most of the time, it is mga electrical rooms. If a multi-story building, mas binilalagay nila yun sa central portion ng building para equal yung distribution ng mga wires, ng mga, mga circuit, uh, ano, mga, mga circuits, no? Tsaka para mas madali yung pag-layout ng mga mga circuits nila at saka yung ano. Pero that's why kinikonsider na natin yun sa planning pa lang. So if you are familiar with that as an architect, alam mo na merong ganong requirement, alam mo na kung saan dapat ilagay para hindi na mahirapan later on while well, during the construction. Uh, you, kasi I mean, sabi ko nga kanina na naalala lang natin na alala lang natin na kailangan pala yun during the construction na. No, may mga ganong situation, worst case scenario yon. So, we can avoid those situations if we are familiar with this. 
we are familiar with the system, we are familiar with the language, we are familiar with its operations, how its applications, its functions, and if the way it is being maintained para, para mas smooth from the design, from the implementation, construction, and operation and maintenance. No? Ewan ko kung na-express ko ng mabuti yung thoughts ko in this, no? or kung, kung na-elaborate ko ng maayos yung yung mga ganitong bagay. Pero if in case, no, may mga questions kayo, uh, you can you can PM me, you can uh, comment, you can comment to the group so that you will uh, you will get additional information or additional uh kumbaga follow up information coming from me. No, ganun. Sana somehow, no, medyo may naintindihan kayo kahit pa ano, kahit konti lang, kahit ganito lang oh. Para oh, kahit ganito lang talaga. All of us, uh, tandaan natin class na architecture uh, yung learning in our profession doesn't end after college, no. It's a lifelong learning experience. While we are alive, there's always a room for us to learn and to discover new ideas, new learnings, new knowledge because uh, in our practice, in our profession, every day may mga bago, may mga trends, may mga changes. No? So, it is a lifelong commitment for us to learn and to discover new things. So, I am learning through this and I am, uh, I am embracing the, the task of teaching you this course and I'm learning again no Sino ang teacher namin nito nung college <laughs> Sino teacher namin nung college no no Ay okay tama no you see in, yung teacher namin hindi ko na lang siya i-shout out dito <laughs> Pero yun uh, it's this this is very important So I hope may na-learn kayo may na-learn din ako by preparing these slides and sana lang na record ko to <laughs> na record to syempre no so if you have some questions pm chat post no i'll be uploading this sa uh, youtube in my youtube channel and comment down below subscribe like share and etc whatever so thank you so much class uh, see you tomorrow sa google meet for our interaction discussion uh, mga question and answer portion. No, may ganun. May ganun ba? Okay, salamat. So, right now, I'm with my pro former professor, teacher, architect Lea Hesta, uh, with former student, no? Si Erika, hello, shout out. <laughs> and tatlo lang kami ngayon sa office. So, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you learned something. Bye-bye.